I was at Boeing uh, working on uh, electronics that will go in a 737. Reliability is absolutely number one. Cost is kind of a secondary. I think it's a very, was for me, a very valuable experience. You know, you, you, you gain a, a discipline uh, there in, in that environment that I think is not as widely present in, you know, in particular in the audio industry. Uh, in college I studied physics, but um, pretty soon realized I wanted to go into more hardware -y design. Um, so after college I ended up working with one of my old professors uh, building and commissioning dark matter detectors and we would install them and operate them in a salt mine in northern England a kilometer underground. That was a, definitely an experience. It was my first real experience realizing the importance of power supplies and uh, low noise and designing things to operate in inhospitable environments. At Boeing we needed low noise because their EMI requirements and system noise requirements are really strict. You know, we we're having switching power supplies uh, going out on a sensor on the wing, and so you know, you had this had similar constraints of this has got to be really, um, you know, quiet. What I focused on a lot was really studying the output of our power supplies characterizing the noise and just systematically lowering the noise as much as possible until the noise of our power supplies was uh, essentially indistinguishable from the noise of a battery. So say you're using an old DS1, which is really designed to operate off of a battery. Um, the output will be no different than if you run it off of a Zuma or an Ohi. One of the things that we wanted to do is, is make sure that there was a lot of extra headroom. Everybody puts out a rating, but it's not a static thing. You know, we say 500 milliamps. We can do about twice the average. You know, so during startup or for some short period of time, if your pedal needs an amp, we'll give it to you. The first isolation stage is from the AC line uh, to the 24 volts. So that's the the main. Uh, safety, you know, power transformer. So that that creates a 24 volt bus that powers all the internal supplies, and then also provides the 24 volt output to daisy chain the ohis. Um, and then each channel has another, a separate transformer, which provides the the second stage of isolation. That really got us the last bits of improvement of noise and, and isolation from the AC line. To, to do the, the two stages of isolation. We run every power supply through an audio precision test. You know, if, if all you're measuring is the voltage and the current output, you can easily have a jittery output that's gonna put noise into your audio circuit. And you know, that's the fundamental job of our power supplies to power sensitive audio circuits. So you know, we felt that we had to run it through that production test to prove to ourselves that each unit, every output is performing as we designed it. very practical to have a switcher operate from 85 volts to 264 volts AC and that gets you you know every voltage around the world where you get those numbers is that in Japan the, the nominal is a hundred so you take 15 percent low for there and then in Australia it's 240 so you take 10 percent above that and that gets you to 264 and now I have a single supply that I can use anywhere Zuma is plenty of power to power really an enormous board with a lot of pedals. The Ohis are the satellite and so that you start with the Zuma as your base and then you add Ohis as needed to expand to whatever number of pedals you're looking to do. And then the Zuma R300, the nice thing about that is the low profile allows you to fit underneath very small pedal board. So you can start a, a system and expand from there in, in a really sleek package. It, you know, if you're looking for something compact, that's a great way to go. The Ohi R30 has a couple of adjustable outputs if you have some 12 volt pedals or an 18 volt pedal, then you, know, you get some more flexibility with that. And it's also very slightly uh, shorter than the Ohi. So if you want to get everybody underneath a, a you know, low profile pedal board, uh, the R300 and the R30 are your ticket. At the lab at the office, we have our own wire winder so we can uh, wire our own transformers. And uh, I think there are five different 
magnetic parts we had to design uh, for the Zuma and the Zuma R300. Hand winding the transformers, characterizing them, uh, seeing what could be improved, ways we could decrease the noise, and just a lot of time spent under a microscope uh, wiring up transformers. Our internal testing data, our development testing data, showed that we really did beat the linear regulators in noise performance and you know, we're able to get a lot of improvements in the low frequencies where the hum and harmonics of the line frequency uh, still leak into the signal even in a linear regulator. Uh, you know, the linear regulator doesn't have the, the high frequency components, but we were successful in filtering those out to where um, yeah, we feel that you're going to get overall better dynamic range uh, and lower noise with our system.